All right. Um, so uh, NASA's in, uh, next mission to Mars uh, just landed on November 26th, so the mission's just getting started. Um, if you guys saw it, we landed um, around 3 p.m. Uh, Eastern time on Cyber Monday, and it was pretty exciting. It's the eighth mission to land on the surface of Mars. Um, so I'll give a brief, a brief overview. So InSight is a lander that's going to study the interior of Mars and attempt to learn how the planet formed. Um, it'll be the first mission to take the vital signs of the planet and give it its first checkup in four and a half billion years. So it'll do this by measuring seismic activity like Mars quakes and meteorite impacts and any crust moving underneath the surface. Um, and it'll also take its internal temperature, uh, measuring the heat flow that's coming out from the core and how much the planet wobbles as it travels around the sun. Um, so why is that cool? It really, it, it actually gains insight into not just how Mars formed, but how all rocky planets formed. So Earth and Venus and Mercury, as well as the moon. And also outside of our solar system, exoplanets that we're finding coming, uh, that are traveling around other stars. Um, so this is our lander. Um, it's a lander, not a rover. So we, uh, it, it can't move anywhere. Um, so we had to pick our landing site very carefully. Um, so it has, uh, solar panels and three legs, um, and it also has an arm with a grapple hook that can help us put our instruments from the deck onto the ground. Um, so you see here our seismometer instrument that will measure um, the seismic activity on Mars, and it's covered with a wind and thermal shield to help mitigate noise. Um, we also have a heat probe instrument that's going to dig down into the ground to take the temperature underneath. We also have these radar instruments called the RISE antennas um, that are going to measure the precise distance and how much the planet is wobbling as it travels around the sun in a year. Uh, we also have some temperature and wind sensors to monitor the atmosphere and any weather that's happening on Mars. So that's pretty cool, too. So a little more in-depth on the seismometer. Um, here it is in the test bed. It's um, a super precise instrument. It can feel all the shakes and wiggles of Mars. Um, it's so sensitive that it can feel movements as small as a hydrogen atom, um, which is kind of hard to picture. But um, what I thought was really cool is that when it was sitting in the test bed in Denver, Colorado, it could feel the waves hitting the beach in Los Angeles. So pretty sensitive. Uh, the heat flow probe, um, HP cubed, um, this is an instrument that's going to essentially stick a, a thermometer down into the surface um, and dig up to 16 feet um, with temperature sensors all, all along its tether as it digs um, to measure the heat flowing out of the, of the core. Um, so like you would nail a hammer into, or sorry, would, like you'd hammer a nail into a wall um, as it slowly sinks in, that's, that's how HP cube is gonna do it. It's gonna slowly hammer its temperature sensor deeper and deeper. Um, and it's going to measure the temperature as it goes. So let's see, basically, um, let's see if this video can play. It's going to push itself into the ground like this, and all along this ribbon has temperature sensors that it's going to gather data as it goes. Will it do it in more than one location? Okay, so we launched um, on May 5th from Vandenberg Air Force Base on the West Coast. Um, it's a two-stage Atlas V rocket. Um, and so this is the first interplanetary launch from the West Coast. Um, usually we launch from Kennedy Space Center down in Florida. Um, and we like to do that because when you launch, you travel with the rotation of the Earth, so you're traveling eastward. Um, and so you're traveling over the ocean as you launch from Florida. And so if anything goes wrong, God forbid, and your rocket blows up um, early in your, in your launch, um, it will land in the ocean and not land over cities or people. Um, so it's super safe to launch from Kennedy. Uh, this is the first one to launch from the West Coast. So in order to not travel over the United States, which would be dangerous if we, if we blew up, um, we traveled down the coast after we launched, um, so southward essentially. Um, and then once we got a high enough altitude um, above the Earth, we crossed over a land at the Panama Canal. Um, but by that point, it's very low likelihood that anything's going to go wrong. Um, so that was exciting. Um, we, uh, my dad and I watched it from, from Vandenberg Air Force Base at 4 a.m. We stood in, in, I think, an artichoke field. 
um, from two miles from the launch pad. It was super foggy at 4 a.m. Um, Vandenberg is known for having a marine layer, so we actually didn't end up seeing anything, but you could feel the whole ground shake as the, lo- as the rocket launched, um, and car alarms were going off, so it was really exciting. If we had stayed behind in L.A., we would have gotten a much better view. Um, this is a photo taken from the mountains behind the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. Um, so you can see it launches and it, as it travels down the coast past Los Angeles. So six and a half months to get to Mars, where do we want to land? Um, so rovers like to land around craters and mountains because they like to look at layers um, and see how, the, see how Mars formed that way. Um, we wanted to land in a super boring location. Uh, we call it the parking lot of Mars. Um, we wanted to land where there weren't a lot of rocks and not a lot of bedrocks, nice and soft dirt to hammer into um, and place our instruments safely. Um, so yeah, like we said, we called it the parking lot of Mars, the Elysium Planitia. So you can see in here, pretty smooth, wanted to avoid all these giant craters, uh, no mountains. So we were aiming for there. And um, so when you're traveling to Mars, um, you know, Mars is really far away. Um, we can only sit and watch our telemetry as a spacecraft tries to land. And so it has to do it all by itself. There's nothing we can do. Um, we have to trust that our computer programs and the spacecraft can handle it by itself. And Mars is really hard to land in um, because it has some atmosphere, but not a lot enough atmosphere to slow you down. Um, so you have to use a parachute and you're coming in really fast. Um, so, but like I said, we're, the spacecraft has to do it all by itself and we're just sitting there watching our telemetry come down. Um, so let me bring you into the control room as we land. And let me know if you can't see this video. One second. It looks like it's on the wrong screen. One second. There we go. Okay. At a velocity of 2,000 meters per second. Insight has passed through peak deceleration. Telemetry shows the spacecraft saw about 8 G. Insight should now be experiencing the peak heating rate. Super hot, super fast, 8 G. are observing signals consistent with parachute deploy. Parachute slows us down a little bit. Altitude convergence, the radar has locked on the ground. Yes. for lander separation. Lander separation commanded. Altitude 600 meters. And then we come down on retro rockets. Altitude 400 meters. 200 meters. 80 meters. 60 meters. 30 meters. 20 meters. 17 meters. Standing by for touchdown. So yeah, waiting for that touchdown was so stressful. Um, yeah, I, I don't think I breathed the whole seven minutes. Um, yeah, but we were so excited to hear that it landed and we were really happy that it was successful, um, as you saw with the handshakes and the cheering. Um, and then we got our first picture down um, from Mars and that was just so exciting to see that it really finally worked and we were safe on the ground. Um, so this is our first picture ever from the surface of Mars taken by InSight. Um, it has a lot of dust on the cover. We have a cover on our camera. So obviously when we're coming down on rockets, there's kicking up dust everywhere. Um, so we had a cover on our, our camera, but the, cam- the cover is see-through. So that's why you see all the dust on the cover lens. Um, we do pop that cover off eventually. Um, but yeah, it looks super safe, super boring, just what we wanted. A couple of rocks, but not too many. Uh, we're really excited to see that we made it. Um, and I didn't really mention this, um, but we did launch with two CubeSats um, with our, in our cargo, um, Marco A and Marco B. Um, and without them, we would have not um, had real-time data um, streaming constantly into that control room to see um, what was going on with our lander. So um, you heard her counting down as it descended through the atmosphere. 
you know, 200 meters, 100 meters. That's all data streaming live from these two CubeSats. And these CubeSats are briefcase-sized spacecraft. We've never sent CubeSats out that far before. Um, and they succeeded fantastically. Um, and this is as it's this is a picture from that CubeSat as it um, after after we landed as it traveled away. So you see its solar panel here and a picture of Mars. So that was really exciting. I think we're going to start sending CubeSats a lot more because that was awesome to get real time data as we were landing. So what do we do now that we're on the ground? Um, basically, we're going to um, assess where we're going to put our instruments. So we can only reach so far with our arms, but we need to place our instruments on the ground. Um, so we're going to take detailed pictures of our uh, workspace and then try to place our instruments on the ground. Um, so basically, you don't want to put um, the instruments down where it's too rocky, and we don't want to aim for a place where it doesn't look like the heat probe can hammer into the ground. Um, so right now, this weekend, actually, we are taking a series of 56 pictures of high-resolution stereo images of our workspace um, so that we can pick the just the perfect location to put all of our instruments down. So here you see the arm with its grapple hook putting uh, the seismometer down on the ground. Um, and then it's going to take its arm again and place the wind and thermal shield, uh, sorry, the wind and temperature shield. It's kind of like an umbrella to decrease noise. Um, it's going to place it over size. Um, so that means if it's windy or if there's temperatures changing, it won't bother size. We like to put it in a little cocoon. And then the last instrument we're going to deploy is the heat probe uh, hammer, uh, HP cubed. And so we're going to put it down in a place that it looks like it can succeed getting 16 feet down into the ground. And kind of like the claw game at Chuck E. Cheese's uh, is basically what we're doing on Mars, but obviously you're doing this on a whole other planet, and it takes time for um, data to travel back and forth from the planet. So you don't want to release your claw too early. You don't want to slam your instrument into the ground. You know how hard it is to win the claw games at Chuck E. Cheese. Um, it's a lot harder to do it on another planet, um, step by step, very slowly. Um, so this is another one of our first pictures from Mars. Um, this is the camera on the on the on the arm, uh, the instrument deployment camera. You see in this picture the arm is still folded and stowed onto the deck. So you see the upper arm here, the elbow is going to be back here, and then our forearm here with the scoop at the end. And here's the grapple that's going to pick up the instruments. Um, and you see actually size is in this picture and a little bit of the reflection of HP cubed in size. Um, and also it's interesting to note that we landed in a very, very lucky spot. You see way out here is a giant rock field and we're really happy we didn't land you know, like right on this rock. That doesn't look fun. No place to put our instruments. So we were very lucky of where we landed, nice and boring, nice and flat to put our instruments down. Um, here's another picture of our deck taken by our arm. You see the grapple here again. Um, you see HP cube, the heat probe hammer, and you see size and the wind and, and temperature shield. Um, and you see these little grapple holes is how it's going to pick up the instruments and put them on the ground. Um, here's a picture of our solar panel. Um, and also in this picture, you can see here's our ra uh, radar antenna, the rise instrument that's going to track the wobble uh, as, we, as Mars travels around the sun. And you also see this instrument right here is our pressure and temperature sensor and wind monitor. It's essentially our weather station. Um, so we are not only looking internally into the planet, but we're also um, monitoring the weather um, and the winds on Mars. Um, Curiosity also has a weather station too, so we also have a weather station. Um, and uh, here's just another view, um, but what's cool is that we've only been on the surface for about 10 days now, um, but we've already gotten some cool science back. So again, our temperature, temperature and pressure sensor is listening to the wind um, and it's already heard the wind on Mars um, traveling over the plains. So this is what it sounds like um, on Mars right now. So 
So pretty cool, but kind of desolate sounding, maybe a little lonely up there on Mars. And then since our seismometer picks up vibrations, it also heard the wind in its own way. Um, as the wind travels across the deck in the solar panels, it picks up vibrations of the wind. So the seismometer heard this. So, yeah, that's where we are right now on Mars, um, 10 days in. Um, our next step is to put our instruments on the ground and start digging into Mars. Um, so we're ready to go. There's still a lot of work to do, um, but we're excited to get going. Do you guys have any questions about InSight or any of the other Mars missions? When you showed us the photo, is that a real photo? I mean, how did yeah, these are all real pictures taken by our camera. Yeah, this is Mars, guys. Do you detect any dust on the instruments at this point? Uh, you can kind of see some here. You see a little bit on the deck. Um, we took a picture directly into our scoop, and we have some dust on them because we kicked up we kicked up a lot of dust as we came down on the retro rockets, um, which is why that first picture from our camera, um, this one, had all the dust covering the lens. Um, so. That'll go away. As you can see, there's, as you heard, there's wind on Mars. It'll get blown off. We're not too concerned about it. Is there rain on Mars? Uh, no rain that we've detected. Um, but uh, we'll keep an eye out for it. We have um, the, one of the orbiters has detected a little bit of liquid water that kind of seeps from the ground. Um, but no rain. Is that humans to Mars? Is that the question? Yes. Yeah, so NASA's working on humans to Mars. It's really hard to get people to Mars. Um, we're really far away from Mars, so you'd have to be in a spacecraft for six months, and it's not super healthy to do it. Um, so we're working on it. Um, we're going to start by going back to the moon first, um, kind of a practice run. Um, but yeah, we're definitely working on it. So you guys can go to school and go work for NASA, and hopefully we'll be starting to send humans to Mars by then. What's the projected lifespan of uh, InSight? Um, so honestly, yeah, uh, we our prime mission is as two years, two Earth years, um, but you know we expect to last much longer than that. I mean, once you place the instruments on the ground, it's a listening game. Um, we'll just be monitoring data. Um, we have plenty of power on our solar panels, so we're not concerned about you know losing power, um, and you know. Hopefully, you know, Opportunity was also a solar-powered rover, and it lasted 15 years. Um, still alive, theoretically, um, on the surface of Mars. So hopefully, maybe we'll last 15 years, too. If something happens to the Earth, would we be able to live on Mars? Um, not right now, but maybe in the future. Uh, Mars doesn't have a lot of water. Um, it has some, some ice caps um, on, its, on its poles, but... Um, not a lot of good air to breathe. It's mostly a carbon dioxide atmosphere. Um, so we'd have to make oxygen somehow. We'd have to find some way to grow food. So we got to work on that. Yeah, volcanoes, definitely. We don't know if they're active anymore, though. And hopefully um, the seismometer will help us figure that out. Um, we've definitely, there's definitely... Um, volcanoes all over Mars, but we haven't seen any erupt. Uh, they all look pretty dead to us from the sky. Um, but by taking the internal readings of the planet, we can see, you know, is the is there still lava flowing? You know, is is the core still molten? Is there plate tectonics that could cause something? Um, so we'll see what's going on with the volcanoes and and underneath the the planet. Yeah. But were we anticipating that? We knew that before? Yeah, so we've gotten color images back from Mars before. And even if you go out um, and look through the telescope, you can see it looks kind of reddish. Um, and that's because um, Mars is pretty, I guess you could say rusty. Um, it, the, there's a lot of oxidizer and iron in the atmosphere and on the, in the soil. So 
when, you know, like your bicycle and when you leave it out in the rain, it turns rusty. Um, that's basically what's happening. There's a lot of iron content in the soil on Mars. So, um, it's very rust colored. With the data that you've collected, is there any been surprises? Um, well, so I've never heard the wind on Mars before. I thought that was really cool. Um, but we were really surprised actually that our landing site looked so benign compared to all the rocks out in the distance. We were really lucky. We kind of look, it almost looks like we landed in like the one patch of like safe area. Um, there's a lot of rocks out there that we really did not want to land on. So we are surprised that we did such a good job. Were you able to guide the, the lander in to avoid the rocks? Uh, so we were, was it just at random? well, so like I, I, I showed in that picture, let me see if I can pull it back up again. Um, there was a landing ellipse that we were planning to land in, um, that cir circular pattern. Um, and we were working through the through this whole six months and through the weekend leading up to landing to try to narrow down our landing site. Um, and that whole process is done by the entry, descent, and landing engineers. And their whole job is to um, precisely try to land in a designated area on, on Mars. Um, and it's a really tricky job to do that. Um, and so we were, we were very lucky that we, we've actually performed the weekend before we performed one more trajectory maneuver to try to line up our landing site right on the bullseye. So we did a really good job, apparently. Could we worms have been able to live on Mars? Sorry, what was that? Could we once have been able to live on Mars? Yeah, so we're trying to figure that out with all of our missions. Um, we think that Mars was once wet. Um, and maybe had lakes and oceans, but we don't know why it doesn't look like that anymore. Um, so that's why we send all these missions to Mars to feel like what has happened to Mars? How did it form? Did it have water? Why does it not have water anymore? Um, was there once life there and is it all gone now? And so, you know, we look at the things we're doing to our earth right now with climate change and, and our water levels changing. Um, and our ice caps melting, and we don't want to really turn into Mars, and we also don't really want to turn into Venus because that's not very nice either. Um, we'd really like to keep Earth the way it is with our oceans. So learning about other planets like Venus and Mars and how they formed and what happened to them in their history, uh, we can learn more about Earth as well and if there was ever, you know, able to live on those other planets as well. Um, so we're not, we, uh, this particular mission is not going to take so soil samples. Um, the Curiosity rover does take samples. Um, it has a drill on it that it drills down a couple centimeters into, uh, into the uh, rock and the bedrock and takes samples. The Mars 2020 mission is another rover that's going to launch in 2020. And that's going to take core samples of rock. So um, it's going to essentially take an entire piece of rock and put it on board as a sample. And analyze that. Yeah, that's that's our hope in this mission um, because you know, we we know a lot about you know the internal structure of Earth and how how many layers Earth has and, and you know what kind of core you know we have, but we don't know anything about the other rocky planets. Um, so that's what we're gonna try to find out with this mission. That's a possibility. Yeah, people have been looking into that. Um, so, um, is it also possibly both on Mars? Since, um, I saw in one book that they're looking, um, there's, um, a little bit of life, like, both on Mars. And, um, I saw that, um, that it was, um, there was, like, a little picture. Oh, the tiny, the circular balls on Mars? Yeah. yeah so those, those are rocks that, um, and because they're circular, um, we know that there was once flowing water on Mars and that, that made them circular. The, the water um, ground away at them and made them nice and smooth and circular. 
So there was definitely flowing water at Mars on one point. Yeah, the Opportunity and Spirit rovers figured that out. Has the jet propulsion science um, changed at all from one Mars uh, launch to the next? Uh, the science? What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, uh, is, it, is the propulsion system that we use today with InSight, is that going to be the same propulsion system for the next Mars mission and the next Mars mission and the next... Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so, so we've land, it depends on what kind of, um, mission you're trying to land. Um, so obviously the way we landed, um, the opportunity in spirit rover was, was with airbags and not a lot of, um, descent propulsion. Um, um, but we, the way we landed the insight lander has been done before and it's, it's basically, um, the same, the same way. Um, we don't, typically change up our propulsion mechanisms. Um, tried and true mechanisms usually work. We don't want to really try anything new if we don't have to. When the instruments collect their data, will we be able to see the data or the interpretation of the data, and where do we look for that? Yeah, so all of our images, as soon as we get them down, um, they go straight on the internet. So you guys see them as soon as we see them. Um, so they're on, um, the website is mars.jpl.nasa.gov. Um, and you guys can look at the raw images as they come down from the spacecraft. Um, and then data also gets released um, pretty quickly as well. Um, that's a little bit harder to interpret um, than pictures. Um, but, you know, the the wind recording that we got down only came down a couple days ago. So we were really excited to get that out to the public as fast as possible. At this point, is there any yeah, I mean, humans can do work a lot faster than robots can. Like I said, like playing the claw game in an arcade is a lot easier in person than it is on another planet. So humans can do science and, and work a lot faster in person. Um, so there is definitely advantages to sending humans there. Um, it's just really difficult to do. Yeah, that's possible. But Earth, that could have happened to Earth too, but Earth has a really cool atmosphere and a uh, magnetic field that kind of shields it from the sun. Um, but uh, Mars doesn't have that, so we don't know what happened to it. Could the spacecraft come back to Earth that you sent? Yeah, so InSight doesn't come back to Earth. It stays there forever. Um, so far, all of our missions have stayed there forever. Um, that's their new home. Um, we are working on a mission that's going to um, be a sister to the Mars 2020 rover that's going to try to bring samples back from Mars. So then we will be able to come back. Yeah. What's the cost for the InSight mission, to put an InSight mission out? Yeah, um, I can give you the exact number because I don't know. But we are, the, we are a very cheap mission. Um, we have, there's there's um, stages of how much funding you can get when you propose a mission. And we're the, we're the lowest funded Um version of that mission. That's why we have so few instruments. Um, uh, like whereas Curiosity has a ton of instruments because um, they were a, a very high budget mission. Um, so when Congress allocates your funds, they allocate, um, you know, you can do a lot more cheaper missions um, and very few high budget missions. Um, so it all, it all depends on what kind of missions you want to do that year. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't know the exact number of, of what the dollar number is for Insight. Um, I could look that up for you, um, but yeah, we're, we're relatively speaking, we're one of the lower budget missions. So, Yeah, I had trouble hearing that. Can you someone repeat it?
light years away is the sun from Mars? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so um, light and data um, information travels at the speed of light. Um, so it takes anywhere from six minutes to about 15 minutes to get light from the sun, or sorry, from Earth um, to Mars. Um, so when we, when we send our information from Earth to Mars, uh, it takes anywhere from six minutes to 15 minutes. So round trip, if you want to send um, information um, and, you know, and, and therefore and light, at light speed, um, it takes roughly 30 minutes, um, anywhere from 15 minutes to 30 minutes to get to send a command from Earth to Mars and then get it, information back from Mars. Is Mars smaller or bigger than Earth? Mars is a little bit smaller than Earth. Does someone repeat that? Where the, where the, it landed, the nice boring spot that you're in. What size is that area that you're in? Oh, um, I think our, our final landing ellipse was a couple hundred kilometers. Um, again, I don't, I don't know the exact number, but yeah, it's, it's very hard to narrow down a bullseye on an entire planet. It's that far away. Um, we're hoping to get the seismometer on the ground before Christmas, fingers crossed. Um, but it's very slow going. You want to be careful as you're as you're putting it down, you know, not to drop it or slam it into the ground. Um, so we're hoping before Christmas we'll get the seismometer on the ground, um, if not sometime in January. Um, and then after that, we'll we'll put the the shield umbrella on it, um, and then the heat probe. And then the heat probe is going to start its hammering. Um, so that's going to take some time too. So hopefully by March, everything will be on the ground and totally hammered. Um, so, and then we'll just be listening for data. Will there be any missions in the near future where we will collect data and figure out if Mars did once have water? Yeah, so we know that Mars once had water. Um, the rovers figured that out. Um, the... Mars and, um, sorry, the Opportunity and Spirit rover, um, they found those round pebbles that were formed in water. So we definitely know that there was water there at one point. What's the best hypothesis now for the internal uh, structure of Mars? We really have no idea. Um, you know, we, we don't think it's super active like Earth is, um, but, you know, we've never looked before so we don't know of any other planet that has plate tectonics because we've never had the instruments to look for it before but we don't think based on what we see on the surface we don't know if mars is super super active um but we're we're, we're looking into it i mean the the volcanoes look a little a little dead and old um so we're trying to figure out what happened and if it once was more active underground What was that? How old is the volcano? Sorry, I couldn't hear it. How old is the volcano? Oh, well, Mars itself is, is thought to be about four and a half billion years old. So pretty old. So when did we launch, when did you launch the spacecraft? Yeah, this spacecraft launched in May on Cinco de Mayo. The little, the little orbiters that came with us? What was the last Mars trip? Was Sorry, can you say that again? What was the last Mars trip? What was the trip? Sorry, did you say picture? Oh, prior to Insight, what was the last spacecraft to visit Mars? Oh, okay. Um, that was Curiosity uh, in 2012. And it's still operating on the surface of Mars now. Wow. So, where are you, I got my dress on back. Really? Were you saying that um, the volcanoes on Mars are 500 million years old? 
Somewhere around that, yeah. Well, it probably took a little while for the planet to finish forming. Um, but I mean, the planet, the volcanoes on Earth are pretty old too. Um, but yeah, we don't, we don't really know. We'd have to go look at them. We don't have a mission that currently goes to a volcano on Mars, so maybe we should work on that one next. Yeah, thanks, guys. We, um, it's pretty cold here, and I think there's probably another group that wants to come in. So. Sounds good.